one, we, we, we found people um, that were primarily located in San Francisco and Silicon Valley that had built companies before um, and had experience doing that. And we would approach them and, and ask them to advise us unofficially, you know, informally advise us, give us feedback um, uh, to kind of save us time. And we would get on regular, you know, weekly or, or um, every other week phone calls with some of these people and um, basically interview them for, for 30 minutes to an hour. And they would also uh, interview us on our progress of what, what we've made uh, uh, so far. And, and we were working on prototypes um, uh, at the time that we were, uh, that I was in school. And we didn't have like a live product with users, but we were like iterating quickly on different prototypes. And that was something that was attractive to um, some of our early investors was our ability to get a lot of done with, uh, sorry, our ability to get a lot done with very little resources. Okay. Um, and uh, that's something that early stage investors, I think, look at is can a team get something done with very little resources? Um, and if so, then imagine what they can do with you know, more resources. Um, sometimes, you know, money hurts people um, since they overhire or they, they um, uh, yeah, overhiring is a, a common mistake that founders make. Um, uh, and generally, you know, money does not solve problems. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, technology and people that need to solve. Um, Effectively yeah. problem solving. Again. Yeah, exactly. So, um, a lot of people think, you know, if I raise venture capital, if I raise seed round of financing, then you know, then I'll be able to breathe. Then things will get easier. But in fact, you know, every you know, at each stage of the company, things get harder and harder and harder. Um, so it's a common misconception. When we went out, and one of our mentors, that um, his name's Keith Raboy, he oh, it's actually a funny story. So Keith, he um, started out as a lawyer, and then ended up working in startups, he's worked uh, at PayPal, executive at PayPal, Slide, LinkedIn, Square, uh, he seed funded $9 billion companies at its earliest stage, he was on the board of Yelp, um, uh, partnered with Max, Max Levchin, partnered with Jeremy Stoppelman, so a number of University of Illinois um, uh, uh, people, and Keith was mentoring us and he uh, was the person that wrote the first check into our company, and we went out to go talk with other investors. People would ask us, you know, how much are you raising? And again, we weren't really raising capital at the time. We, we, had, we were in school, very, very uh, low cost. We didn't need to, to raise capital. Michael and I would look at each other and be like, well, what should we say? Um, and uh, uh, we worked with some of our mentors and somehow came across uh, uh, the million dollar number and said, well, that seems like a, that would give us you know, enough money to, to start the business and move out to San Francisco and um, uh, give my parents you know, the, the, the confidence to just kind of support and let me uh, be happy with my decision to, to take a leave of absence. Um, uh, but uh, going on somewhat of a tangent, I'll, I'll, I'll share the original story. So Kiefer Boy, you know, he was our first investor. I, I remember it was November uh, of my freshman year, and I'm from Houston, so this is my first winter ever. And uh, I think I tweeted like, you know, haven't left my dorm in three days, like studying for you know midterms or something like that. And Keith replied on Twitter, drop out. And I replied, invest in my company. He said, deal. And that was like how the first uh, 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 first investor came about. Why do I keep going back? Well, I love the University of Illinois. Um, the students here is what keeps me coming back. Um, when I left uh, uh, during my, it was right after my freshman year, during my sophomore year, I would make it a point to come back at least, you know, two to four times a year um, uh, to visit. And um, today, you know, I, I, I haven't been back since 2014, since my, when I would have graduated, but um, uh, Hack Illinois is something that's that's brought me back here um, uh, a number of times. And yeah, in short, it's the students, you know, it's, uh, I'm excited this trip to meet a bunch of students. It's Have you been to Taj before? 
Um, so we used to work with Bruce, the owner there, and just work on different technology experiments at the store, at the restaurant. We would um, uh, build technology for his restaurant. He would let us Give me an example. An example of that was, um, uh, we thought it would be really cool. This was just a, a side project that we worked on at school. If, if physical restaurants could be smart. So you walk into a place, the place would know that I walked into the place and then personalize the experience um, uh, based off of who, whoever was there. So an example of that was, we did it with music to start. So a group of people would walk in and it would take the uh, highest common denominator of, of music interests and start playing you know, music that everyone liked in the restaurant. Um, so if everyone liked Kanye West, Kanye West would start playing. Um, and you, you could do that by either creating a profile in this app that we built and putting in your music interests, or by texting um, a, a phone number that was on a, on a screen. And uh, so it was like a, a modern day jukebox, um, I guess. And Bruce would let us kind of do whatever we wanted throughout the restaurant to really? experiment with, you know, uh, uh, giving out free desserts for people that texted in the number to um, doing various things like that. So that was one example. And Bruce really liked it. He said, hey, you know, I have all this artwork in my, my restaurant. Can we replace my artwork with screens and then have the artwork be personalized to people's likings? So we did that. Um, I don't know what the store looks like today, um, but at one point it was filled with Samsung TV screens. Um, so that was uh, 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 something that... that that I'm looking forward to see what the store looks like today. Absolutely, like absolutely. Today. That's that's really supportive, you know, beyond just the, the people in this building, exactly on this campus. How'd um, you get to know? Um, we just walked in. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we just walked in, and and um, I remember Michael, my co-founder. He was going to his friend's wedding, and they asked him to DJ. And he said, "Sure, you know, he didn't want to. Sure, I'll DJ." And but he didn't. He didn't really want to stand there and DJ the whole whole night. So he built this technology where someone could text in a song request, and and then it would play. Um, and he did that. I think waiting for his layover from you know from Champaign to Chicago, Chicago to wherever the wedding was. And I was on the phone with him, and he and he said, "Do you think people would like that?" And I was actually at Zaz with a group of friends and. I just asked you know, 10 of my friends that were all at Zaz together, and they're like, yeah, it'd be awesome. And then I think we went downstairs and asked the owner. Really? Um, and he was supportive. 